I'm sure like me, you've been following the American elections uh, and the campaign towards November 2020 and wondering what sort of a climate produces such a mediocrity of leadership in that country. I mean, one can be pro-Trump, against Trump. That's not the issue. There is no, nobody else. Look at the uh, opposition Democrats. They fell like nine pins in front of a, a person who's tied up in his own scandals. I mean, uh, Joe Biden and his $50,000 a month son hired, connected with Chinese and Ukrainian corporations. I mean, how, how on earth does a country that produces the best in science and engineering and the professions cannot produce men of caliber and character and integrity in Washington? That's, uh, that's mind-boggling. I mean, uh, for a president of the United States to say we will send no masks to Canada? I mean, did he miss Geography 101 in his education? Of course, real estate agents are usually not uh, that concerned of areas other than where properties are hot and maybe that's why he, he just doesn't know that the masks are made out of material that comes from Canada. But forget about the masks. He's made a horse and pony show out of his daily briefings. I watch it now as comedy because other than the professional doctors that come and speak over there, well, one of the, them, the, the tall woman, in the first few days was coming as if it was a fashion show, overdressed. I mean, nobody looked tired, exhausted. The doctors are doing a fine job over there, but is there nobody else? Come November, what, what, what's going to be the choice? The guy who did have an opportunity, Bernie Sanders, wrapped himself with the jihadis and posed with, uh, you know, the most anti-American members of the Congress. <laughs> Ilhan Omar, that kid who became a, a congresswoman, married her own brother, then had an affair with her chief of staff or whoever it is, but insisted on keeping a headscarf to show her modest Islamic modesty. I mean, seriously. And then you find out that uh, Bernie Sanders campaign is being run by someone with a Pakistani ancestry. Oh my God, <laughs> nobody else left. And Mr. Ro Khanna, born or parents from India, but sitting in the Pakistan lobby at the Congress, that's the guy they chose. And obviously, he just fizzled out. Did anyone tell him that going to speak at the Islamic Society of North America and refusing to speak at APEC would send a clear message that as a Jew, you sound as if you're anti-Semitic? That's it. No, John Kennedy, no, not even a Dukakis. We're being offered nothing. No McGovern. I dread that on November 6, 2020, when the results are there, I think that's the date of the election, we have four more years of a man who just doesn't know what he's saying. And it is, this is a selling point, his defenders say, oh, he's so funny, he's rustic. I would rather have the governor of New York be the president of America. Seriously, that's the guy who looks like he's concerned about people. And then the seven governors who will not let uh, sh shut down or any restriction because, hey, God's with us. I mean, every evangelical right-wing guy should be sent to Pakistan for a refresher course. Half of them to Somalia, the other to Pakistan. So they get really steeled in their stupidity and sent back and say, yeah, this is the real idiotic phase of your life. Go, go to America and spread the word of God.
People are dying and these guys are going to churches saying, Hallelujah, I have come to save the people. Don't they realize that God's on a leave of absence? Every time somebody goes to church, hundreds die. <laughs> South Korea, Iran. <laughs> Where else do you need the evidence that God is not the operator of germs distribution systems? You know, it's not that God is sitting with accounts and saying, hmm, tuberculosis, Ghana. Hmm, good, 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 good. Coronavirus, ah, let's sprinkle it, you know, let's throw it in. If God couldn't stop the spread of the coronavirus, you think he's going to intervene now that it has caused so much damage? You know, mind your own business, you save your own crap. But America? It's pathetic. Always remember the words of General Eisenhower when he said, the military industrial complex. He said it what, 1950s? They will determine the future of the United States of America because each congressman has some military industry in his or her district. And to keep it pumping out, they will keep on going to war. So, from my perspective, Tulsi Gabbard was the best candidate and America gave, gave a verdict that she is the least of their choices. Tells you a lot about what the United States of America is heading to and why it is so vulnerable to idiots in overseas countries where the hatred of democracy is embalmed in their spirit. I doubt if America can, can come back after this. It's the only country where a president gets a Nobel Prize for doing nothing. <laughs> oh, Obama. Anyway, let's pray. If we have to pray to God, let's hope and pray that sanity prevails in the United States and people vote after thinking. Just because there are no football games going out there doesn't mean that every American has to be, you know, looking for gladiator sports in presidential elections. This is not the NHL. This is the world at stake.